Stop eating fruits and vegetables. People think I'm nuts when I talk about this because it's a big deal. Eating fruits and vegetables. What? You have to stop doing that? What? How am I going to get my nutrition is what they say. And there's, there are reasons for this. And this is what we're going to talk about today in this episode is why do I recommend stopping eating to stop eating fruits and vegetables? Let's talk about that stuff. And here we go. First and foremost, I'd like to tell you that I recommend a carnivore diet. And the reason for that is, well, there's another video we just did about that whole topic, and there are good reasons for it. Decreases inflammation, way easier to digest these foods and absorb the nutrients from them. And there's a whole array of wonderful, wonderful reasons. But in the process of describing this, people say, well, I got to eat fruits and vegetables to get my nutrition right. And actually, no. And the re let me tell you first the reasons why you don't want to do fruits and vegetables. So first and foremost, the bioavailability of the nutrients that are in fruits and vegetables is not very good. It's very, it's a lot less bioavailable compared to animal protein and animal fat. So that's a problem. And problem number one, people will absolutely need to take digestive enzymes. Otherwise, they're not going to digest and therefore they won't absorb their nutrition as well. So here are some studies that support what I'm telling you, because I don't want you to just take my word for it. So oxalates, oxalates, a study published in the Journal of Nutrients in 2017, found that high levels of oxalates in the diet were associated with increased risk of kidney stones. So, and what foods would oxalates be in? Spinach, beet greens, rhubarb, almonds, and grains. And of course, almonds and grains aren't vegetables, but they're common foods that we all have a tendency to eat, right? So oxalates, we don't want those because, and, and as you know, doctors will say, well, if you got kidney stones, don't eat red meat and cheese. Well, I would disagree with that because of oxalates. Arabic gum or gum Arabic, a study found in the Journal of Food and Chemical Toxicology in 2016, found that gum Arabic could, be, could cause bloating, basically. Bloating diarrhea in some people. So where would you get Arabic gum, and this is in like soft molded candies, gumdrops, the chewy types of foods. Soda also has Arabic gum, honey roasted and other seasoned nuts, and of course frozen and canned foods. Okay, so Arabic gum, not so healthy for you, not so good for you. And what about lectins? What about lectins? That's another chemical toxin that's not so good that's in foods, built into foods. And this is a study that's done in the Journal of uh, Frontiers in Microbiology in 2019. Found that lectins bind to cells in the gut lining and they cause inflammation there. Hence, they can cause leaky gut, right? Where do you get lectins? Beans, lentils, peas, soybeans, peanuts, nightshade vegetables. Nightshade vegetables, tomato, potato, and eggplant. And for those, for those of you out there that um, smoke, of course, tobacco has is considered a nightshade as well. Not that you would eat tobacco necessarily. So, and there was a doctor, maybe you know that doctor, he's a cardiologist who talked about lectins. He's written books on lectins. How about tannins? Now tannins, and this is from a study in the Agricultural Food and Chemistry Journal in 2015, found that tannins can bind to proteins in the gut and make them difficult to digest. So as you're eating food, Tannins can bind to them so you can't really digest and therefore absorb them. Coffee beans. Now, people don't usually eat coffee beans, but they drink coffee. Um, tea leaves have tannins in them. Red wine has tannins. <clears throat> Blackberries, cranberries, plums, persimmons, and walnuts have tannins. <coughs> Pardon me. What about saponins? Saponins. Journal of Nature review, uh, Reviews in Microbiology in 2017 demonstrated that sapotin, saponins disrupt uh, the balance of good and bad bacteria in the gut. So they can create dysbiosis, which can lead to inflammation. And what foods would saponins be in? But tomatoes, potatoes, oats, peas, soybeans, and beans. And we could continue. We could talk about phthalates. Have you heard of phthalates? It's a group of chemicals that are in a wide variety of products, especially in plastics. So this is against, this is something I would say, suggest that you avoid putting your food in plastic baggies like Ziploc bags or 
in Tupperware where you're getting exposure to, to phthalates. Why are phthalates so bad? Because they're hormone disruptors, endocrine disruptors, and that interferes with your body's natural hormone production. So a super common thing out there is something called low T. You know what the T stands for is low testosterone. And men are all about increasing their testosterone levels. But why is it such a problem today? And it's because of exposure to hormone disruptors. So phthalates, dis they definitely disrupt the gut microbiome. Um, they definitely affect digestion. They affect your immune system. Your overall health It's really not good. I mean, there's a whole bunch more uh, problems with phthalates. They've been linked to causing r risks of cancer, um, risks of diabetes, uh, just not, not good. Now, washing your foods, that certainly helps them, especially if they've been stored in plastic things. So you wanna avoid phthalates. Um, you might be asking the question, well, you just talked about plastics, right? And we're really talking about, well, where can you get them in foods? The problem with them is that typically it's not so much that they're in them. This is like a toxin that's put into them from where you would get your fruits and vegetables. Because classically you'll find, I don't know, celery in a baggie, in a zip, not a Ziploc baggie, but a plastic bag. So we have to watch our exposure to those toxins. So I hope this helps. I would recommend that you choose, if you're, gonna, if you're not making the big switch to, um, to carnivore yet, I'd recommend that you do so, but certainly I would definitely switch your storage of these vegetables and fruits. Keep them away from plastics. You wanna choose organic when possible. You wanna wash your vegetables and certainly um, avoid cooking in nonstick pans because that can create more exposure to bad chemicals that would affect you and affect your health. So pretty crazy subject, but yes, there are toxins in vegetables that you definitely, fruits and vegetables that you don't want to be exposed to because they cause problems. And check, check yourself. Like I said, this great thing to do is dig deeply into your gut. So find your belly button and go about two to three inches around, all the way around your belly button and see if in fact it's tender. Of course, you might have the obvious symptom of, gosh, I've got bloating, I've got gas, I've got constipation or diarrhea, I've got gut pain. Those are just obvious reasons why you've got issues. But I would say as you take the fruits and vegetables out, you will notice an amazing change in your gut health. Hopefully this helps. I'd love to hear your questions or comments. Be nice out there. <laughs> um, love to hear your questions or comments. If I can help you out, uh, you can call my office at 562-860-3404. I'm on email, draugustine at gmail.com. I'm also on social media, TikTok, YouTube, as well as Instagram. You can find me there. Love it if you'd subscribe and give me likes there because it really does help the channel out a ton. I'm also on podcasts, Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. So you can also, if you like listening instead, you can find me there as well. My name is Dr. Augustine from Head to Wellness. I hope this helps. Love to hear your questions or comments and have a great day.